for a while now, Turkey buying the Russian-made S-400 air defense system. Most people, even those not familiar with military weapons, has now heard of this system. It's a highly capable, mobile, long-range air defense system able to shoot down everything from ballistic missiles to stealth bombers. Despite threats and sanctions and offers of alternative systems by the US, Turkey has been sticking with the purchase. And just now, the first components of the S-400 are arriving in Turkey and is slated to become operational by October. So what is the big deal with them purchasing a Russian-made air defense system? Turkey is a member of NATO, a military alliance between the US, Canada, and much of Europe. NATO was formed during the Cold War to stand against the Soviet Union. Article 5 of the treaty calls for other members to come to the defense if any NATO member is attacked. So if the Soviet Union had invaded Norway, the US, UK, France, etc. would come to Norway's defense. Interestingly enough, Article 5 was never invoked during the Cold War. It wasn't until after, after the events of 9-11, when the US invoked Article 5 and NATO began conducting counterterrorism operations throughout the Middle East. But to back up a bit, to better conduct operations, training, and interoperability, strong emphasis has been placed on the standardization of weapons used by NATO countries. Although it is not required, things like ammunition, communications, map markings, and classifications have attempted to be standardized to better achieve this. Turkey using a Russian-made S-400 instead of the US Patriot is one of the reasons for the current dispute. In the event of a conflict, sharing information, data, and planning becomes much more difficult with military equipment that does not integrate and communicate with the rest. But a much bigger reason is the F-35. Turkey was one of the original funders of the Joint Strike Fighter program and contributed $175 million to develop the aircraft. The X-35 won over Boeing's X-32 and became the F-35. Turkey had signed on to purchase 100 F-35s and is planning to produce components for the entire F-35 program in Turkey. That is all in jeopardy now. The US argument is that Turkey buying the S-400, which the F-35 is designed to fight against, could allow comparisons and techniques to be discovered to defeat the F-35, and this knowledge could be transferred back to Russia. Details such as each's effectiveness against the other, and radar and ESM signatures could be exposed. In response, the US has threatened to kick Turkey out of the F-35 program and refuse to sell them the aircraft unless they cancel the deal. The US Congress has been discussing banning sales of the F-35 to Turkey, but President Trump could veto any bill that makes it to his desk. Trump has made a few statements defending Turkey, blaming the current predicament on the past administration. However, most of Congress seems to be in favor of the ban, and likely has the numbers to override any such veto, even if one did occur. So the ban at this point seems almost certain. The interesting thing is that Turkey has not, at least publicly, given up the possibility of getting the F-35. Turkish officials have repeatedly stated that they were still planning on purchasing the aircraft, and believe that a deal would soon be reached. Despite this, they have not changed their stance on purchasing the S-400. Just recently, on the 12th of July, the Turkish National Defense Minister stated that they are still a partner in the program and is committed to buying the F-35. And furthermore, the largest issue is the larger US and Russia tensions. Like the Cold War, but so far to a lesser extent, both the US and Russia have been trying to pull countries into their own sphere of influence. While Turkey is a member of NATO, they have been getting closer with Russia. Their relationship with Russia is an interesting one. During the Cold War, they were firmly aligned with the US. They even hosted US Jupiter medium-range nuclear-armed ballistic missiles within striking distance of Moscow. More recently, in 2015, Turkey shot down a Russian Su-24 that they claimed violated their airspace near the border with Syria. A year later, Andrei Karlov, the Russian ambassador to Turkey, was assassinated while giving a speech in Turkey. Relations between the two seemed to be at an all-time low, but that quickly changed. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, expressed regret to Putin for shooting down the aircraft. Russia removed the sanctions it had placed on Turkey in response, they agreed to restart work on a major oil pipeline between the two nations, and signed the deal to purchase the S-400. Turkey is an important country geographically. It has been called the gateway to Europe, connecting Europe and the Middle East, and controls the Bosporus Strait, the only waterway between the Black Sea and the rest of the Mediterranean Sea. 
With the joining of Bulgaria and Romania in NATO, and the recent Russian annexation of Crimea, the Black Sea has taken on a larger strategic importance in the 21st century. In the event of war, as Turkey is a member of NATO, they could shut down Russia's access out into the Mediterranean Sea from the Black Sea. And Russia has a large number of surface ships and submarines stationed in that sea. Having a closer relationship with Turkey guarantees access to the Bosporus. The US also has a major airbase in Turkey, in Kyrlik. The base is an important strategic location, housing tactical nuclear weapons, part of the US deterrent strategy against Russia, and for conflicts in the Middle East, as Syria is less than 100 miles away. And finally, Turkey has always wanted to have a strong, independent military, even going all the way back to the Cold War. As I mentioned earlier, Jupiter ballistic missiles were stationed in Turkey. There were several debates between US and Turkish officials at the time. Turkey wanted the missiles and warheads under their own control so that they could quickly react in the event of a war, but the US refused. More recently, they have begun to develop their own weapons and aircraft, such as the SOM cruise missile and the planned fifth generation TFX stealth fighter. They actually tried to buy the Patriot air defense system from the US for years, but were denied. Instead, NATO deployed a German Patriot air defense system on their border with Syria, which was not under Turkish control. So Russia agreeing to sell them a long-range air defense system could be seen more as Turkey seeking its own powerful, independent military without having to have to rely on or be treated as a lesser than any other military power. However, this does not change the current situation in the eyes of the US. The US has now tried to offer Turkey the Patriot instead of the S-400 but Turkey has refused to cancel the deal. From Turkey's point of view, they want the best, independent defense they can afford. Before the purchase of the S-400, they had tried to buy the Patriot from the US, but they also looked at buying the Chinese FD-2000, which is the export version of China's HQ-9, which is in turn based partly on Russia's S-300 and looks almost identical. Compared to the Patriot, the S-400 has a much longer range, the ability to engage targets in any direction, and is also less expensive. The US also typically tries to exert much more control over the weapons they sell, and there are even rumors that the US has kill switches encoded into the hardware, and could render the weaponry useless if the US decided to do so. Back in 2013, Turkey's defense ministers stated that they are considering Russian and Chinese air defense systems because the US refused to co-produce and transfer the technology. But clearly, they understand buying a Russian system will put them at odds with the very military alliance that they are a part of, NATO. So you can imagine there's been a lot of discussions and consideration in Turkey before proceeding with this deal. So the S-400 deal is a physically small, but potentially politically giant shift. With the US threatening to ban sales of the F-35, Turkey has now discussed buying even more Russian military hardware such as the Su-35 and the new stealthy Su-57. So far, no deal has been reached with Russia on these, but if the US does ban Turkey from the F-35, it could become a reality, and this would almost certainly cause a larger rift between the US and Turkey. So unless a deal is reached, it seems inevitable, especially with the arrival of the S-400 already beginning. Either way, it'll be an interesting topic to follow over the next few years. Before you go, I want to talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands upon thousands of classes and everything from design to business, technology that helps you learn cutting edge skills. They virtually have everything. Learn video editing or entrepreneurship, tattooing, and much, much more. You get actual experts who work in the field to guide you through different courses, all at your own pace. They have recently introduced a groups feature which allows members to connect with others in your field. These will teach you the skills needed to succeed in today's and in the future's economy, and could greatly help get you a career in a high paying job that you love. In some cases, those skills could be more valuable than having a college degree, and all for a tiny, tiny fraction of the price. With my link here, you will get two months free of unlimited classes. Sign up, try it out. If you don't like it, you can cancel it right after but make sure you use my link here to get those two free months. And by doing so, you help support this channel. Go check them out. The link is in the description.